Hey everyone, I'm back with yet another MIDI controller for my gigantic Reaper MIDI mapping project. Um, this is obviously the Novation Launch Key 49 Mark III. Uh, it's not ideal for all the other maps that I've done because it does not have endless encoders. Uh, these are obviously knobs that just turn, you know, like not endlessly. So you can't do the jog by timeline or the jog the timeline by measure. You can't track scroll up and down. You can't zoom in and out vertically, horizontally. You can't select items. You can't move items. You can't do anything, anything like that, which sucks. But I did map these two buttons to uh, measure forward and back, and then everything else is mapped to something uh, useful. Uh, another cool thing is the transport, which you can't see on the right side. All of these uh, eight buttons can be MIDI learned with Reaper uh, in Reaper's actions, which is really handy. And also Novation put it on, put each button on MIDI channel 16, which is really handy because MIDI channel one always clashes with a lot of, a lot of things. Um, track forward and back is uh, also on MIDI channel 16. So I made that basically previous marker or region. Um, so here's a quick rundown of everything. Uh, the sliders and the buttons um, or the faders and the buttons share a custom mode. So whatever you set the buttons to, you got to make sure you think about your faders. Um, these are set to the first eight tracks of Reaper uh, volume. And then the last one is the master volume in Reaper. But what I'm probably going to do is modify the map just to have this as a um, selected track volume because it's more handy. And then the other seven things could just be MIDI learnable for like synth plugins or whatever else. Um, all right, so here's how everything breaks down. I'll go over the buttons first. Measure forward and back. As you can see, it's not as fast as, uh, you know, turning an encoder <laughs> like all the other videos that I've done. Um, still, still helpful though. And then uh, these two orange buttons are marker or region, previous or next. So basically, if you don't have any markers, it just jumps regions. This is really helpful for like live jamming, you know, like on like say like loop one, loop two, loop three, or like verse, chorus, you know what I mean? It's great. Reaper's regions almost act as Ableton's session view in a way. If, if you kind of, you know, just like figure them out, it's really, really helpful. Um, and then this is time selection start, time selection end. So basically if you, you know, go to measure 21, set your time selection start, go to measure 25, set your time selection end, it automatically jumps to the beginning of the time selection so you could record some stuff, which is really helpful. Um, this purple button is FX chain uh, show or hide. So I gotta go to a track that actually has, um, uh, synth plugin on it. Uh, this one has the Tau Uno LX2, so you can show and hide. Very helpful. Uh, this is insert marker, which obviously does exactly what it says. You know, you got to use your measures, and you could just kind of insert. Whoops, got to insert a marker there, maybe there, maybe here. Um, now I'm clicking undo on the transport section, which is really helpful, like I said. And this last button is called arm uh, slash select. So obviously I set it to arm, whatever track is selected, as you can see. Now the uh, 16 buttons are uh, basically some of them are duplicates of, of what the buttons are over here. Or the 16 pads are um, duplicates of the buttons uh, over here. Th this is a uh, track previous or next. Um, this is make region. So if you have a time selection, which you can see clearly it is selected, you can just hit this and it, be, and it makes a region out of it, which is really helpful. And, you know, the time selection start and end is here too. So if you're right or left-handed, you know, you could measure this way like this, set your time selection start, set your end, and it jumps back when you uh, set the end point. Um, toggle windows is basically, you know, if you have a synth plugin open, there's your FX chain again. Whoops. Uh, oh, I'm inserting marker. Yes, FX chain. <laughs> you could uh, toggle, you know, like show, hide the windows. Anything floating will hide. Uh, this button right here is focus. So if you have like three floating windows, it just cycles between the focused window. Very helpful. Just like on uh, some of my other maps. Actually, most of them. Um, this is marker uh, region previous or next. Just like, just like the orange. Uh, buttons as you can see they're lighting up um, as I do you know this pretty cool um, this right here just opens and closes the media explorer I have it docked to the right so that's really helpful and fast um, 
cycle FX, say if you have two um, FX in your FX chain, you have like a synth plugin and then like Valhalla, you know, reverb or something like that. Uh, this button just cycles the effects of the floating window. So you can kind of access, you know, um, look at the, either the synth plugin or the effect plugin. Very handy. Uh, FX chain does the same thing as this one over here. And they're the same color. <clears throat> see. And then insert marker obviously is green right here. And, you know, it's the same exact thing. And what else? Uh, item, previous item, and next item. This is really handy. So I'm just going to use the mouse and, you know, basically duplicate these items here. And what these two blue pads do is if the track is selected, which it is now, you can just kind of go forward and back and select items. Very handy, you know. Um, and then uh, this white button is just redo uh, because undo is already in the transport section on the right side. So it needed a redo button. And I did not map the uh, knobs to anything. If, if anything, it's just a generic, you know, like MIDI learn map, uh, random CCs on, on the same MIDI channel. And what else? Uh, the track buttons are marker or region. So basically, notice how if the region is not selected it just kind of it just kind of uh selects like the beginning and end of the region and any markers and or the end of your project but this is a little more handy this is like actually specifically goes to the region which is really nice and this just kind of you know just bounces around to the marker points so you have total control over a lot of things even though it's missing the jog encoder you know uh, by measure you could still do one measure at a time, or you could set your markers and, and regions and just kind of totally have a field day and, you know, just easily access certain parts of your, your song. And what else? Okay. Yeah. So this, I'm just going to move this over a little bit. This is so awesome. Um, the, uh, whoops, hang on. It's like sitting on top of my SL Mark three, trying not to, uh, make it, <laughs> hit those buttons there we go okay so the transport so i, I mapped uh the capture midi button to create like let's say i have a time selection um let's see like yay long uh capture midi creates an empty midi item it, within that time selection and it also sets the track to midi overdub which is really handy so you could easily make like a loop um so if the loop is enabled, like right here, there's your loop button. Um, if the loop is enabled, you could sit there and just kind of like make, um, you know, just do like live looping into MIDI items, um, MIDI overdub, very handy. Um, and quantize, obviously, if you do a really crappy performance, um, you could hit stop and then just quick quantize and it'll quantize uh, directly to whatever you last set the grid to. So if it's 16th notes, that quantizes it to 16th, very handy. Click is obviously metronome on and off. Um, you know, play is play, stop is stop, record, you get the idea. Um, so it's just nice that they put these on MIDI channel 16 because you can easily just go into your Reaper actions and customize that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. I do like this keyboard a lot. I love how there's four custom maps for the faders and buttons, and then there's four uh, custom maps for the pads. I think uh, for uh, custom one, I think I have it set to, I don't know, just like like a major scale or something. Uh, two is like, you know, my Reaper stuff. Three is uh, default and four is default. And then up here, yep, yeah, all these, uh, yeah, all those uh, knob modes are just like totally uh, default. So really cool, really handy. It's a nice keyboard. Uh, if I had one complaint about it, which other people have said is uh, a, an issue, the keys are a little, the travel's kind of big and they're kind of springy. You know what I mean? Like the, they don't feel great compared to um, the Arturia Key Lab uh, Essential series. Uh, obviously my SL Mark III, I love that key bed. Um, yeah, not a huge fan of this key bed, though the velocity is pretty good and it, and it plays like pretty okay. It's just, it just, they just feel really springy, bouncy. And, and there's just, I don't know, like a big travel or maybe it's small. I don't know how to describe it. I just, uh, to me, it just feels like a lot of movement and just a lot of spring, springy action. But 
it's cool with the custom stuff. That's always super cool. Um, as you can see, you know, I have this label tape, you know, showing me what's what, so I don't forget. But really handy, again, four custom modes for the knobs, four custom modes for the drum pads, which don't have to be MIDI notes. They could be MIDI CC or program change messages, which they are in my map. And, you know, same thing with the buttons here. They could be CCs, they could be program changes, and then, you know, the faders obviously do what they do. But really dig this, very, very handy. It's nice to have that for Reaper without going into the control services stuff you just it's all reaper actions you don't have to do anything weird or different so hope that helps um please continue to wear your mask um and take care of your fellow humans uh be kind be you know empathetic be compassionate just be awesome um thank you so much for watching if you like this video and found it helpful please subscribe and or comment below and or say hello and i will say hello back i'm very active on youtube and everywhere else so if you need help i'm here all right thanks again guys uh love you stay cool i'll see you soon